All right, so this is rasterizing triangles, part two. This time we'll be looking at figuring out which pixels and which scan lines should be colored in. So we'll return to our original triangle. This is the same triangle we were looking at before with the bottom vertex at 7, 2, middle vertex at 4, 7, and top vertex at 11, 10. And here I've already filled in the table of the values of x on the left and the values of x on the right. In the previous little video, we computed delta x on the left to be negative 3 fifths. And off on the side, I computed delta x on the right to be 1 half. And you can figure that out for yourself and see if you got the same answer. So in each scan line, we know that the scan line spans the space between x on the left and x on the right. So for example, over here in scan line 3, so 1, 2, 3. So in scan line 3, the scan line spans the space between 6 and 2 fifths and 7 and a half. So the question then is which pixel centers lie between 6 and 2 fifths and 7 and a half? So if we look at 6 and 2 fifths over here on the left side, we can see that the center of the pixel in column 6, row 3, does not lie between the left and the right edge, so we leave it alone. However, the pixel here at row 3, column 7, does lie between the left edge and the right edge. And that's actually easy to see from our table here, because 6 and 2 fifths, 6 and 2 fifths is less than 7, and that in turn is less than or equal to 7.5. So this pixel right here is going to get colored in, so I'll color that in. Now the next question to deal with is what to do with the pixel right on the right edge at 7.5. You may notice that I used a less than right here on the left edge and a less than or equal to right here on the right edge. So that means that my triangle is open on the left and closed on the right. What that means is that if my pixel center, if my pixel, if my right edge happens to pass right through 7, then I would have drawn the pixel in on the left. So uh, we color in that pixel. And then next we can do the same comparison with pixel number 8 right here, which is right there. So pixel 8, 6 and 2 fifths is less than 8, but 8 is not less than or equal to 7 and a half. So this pixel is, we leave that pixel alone. And we know that we have passed the right edge of our triangle, so now we know we can go on to the next scan line. So in the next scan line, scan line number 4, I start off with 5 and 4 fifths, so 5 and 4 fifths right about there. Keep in mind this drawing isn't perfectly to scale and perfectly right. So I have 5 and 4 fifths on the left, so 5 and 4 fifths on the left, and then I have 8 on the right. So what I want to do is I want to color in pixels that lie between 5 and 4 fifths, that is they're less than 5 and 4 fifths and 8, that is they're less than or equal to 8. So I start off with 5. 5 is not less than 5 and 4 fifths. Then I move on to 6. 6 is greater than 5 and 4 fifths. And 6 is less than 8, which means I color in this pixel right here. Then I move on to pixel 7. 7 is greater than 5 and 4 fifths, and 7 is less than or equal to 8, so I color in this pixel. And now we'll see that the triangle is in fact closed on the left, because when I move on to column 8, I see that 8 is greater than 5 and 4 fifths, but 8 is less than or equal to 8, so I color in this pixel as well. And that's uh, the next scan line. So when I'm done with 8, I move on to column 9. 9 is greater than 8, so now I know I'm ready to move on to the next scan line. In the next scan line, 
Over here on the left, I have five and a fifth. And then over here on the right, I have eight and a half. And so now I'm going to take each column and compare it to five and a fifth and eight and a half to see which pixels I should color. Five is still not greater than five and a fifth. I said that backwards a minute ago. You'll have to figure that out on your own. So five is not greater than five and a fifth. So I don't color in the pixel here in column five. However, six is greater than five and a fifth and less than eight and a half. So I color in pixel six. Same with seven. Same with eight. And at nine, I'm done. Move up to the next scan line. In the next scan line, I'm comparing 4 and 3 fifths and 9. And so I do finally get to fill in pixel number 5 because 5 is in fact greater than 4 and 3 fifths. Fill in 6, fill in 7, fill in 8. 9 is less than or equal to 9. My triangle is closed on the right, so I fill in that pixel as well. Next up is scan line number seven. So I'm here on scan line number seven. And now I'm going to compare four on the left is less than and then less than or equal to nine and a half on the right. So I put four in to figure out if I should color this pixel right here. However, four is not greater than four. So I leave this pixel alone. Keep in mind my triangle is open on the left. Then I put in 5, it turns out 5 is greater than 4, which is less than 9.5. So I fill in that pixel, that pixel, that pixel. Notice I'm careful to cover the center of my pixel, because the center of my pixel actually lies at the center of the intersection point of the two lines. And finally I get to 10, 10 is not less than 9.5, so I'm done. Now when I come across the midpoint, I switch the slope. So I use the slope of this line to figure out delta x on the left and continue using the slope of this line to figure out delta x on the right. So delta x on the left will change for this triangle when I cross the midpoint. Okay, and then we just keep filling in. I'm open on the left. Keep filling in pixels until we get something that is a pretty good approximation of our triangle. Next, we'll talk about interpolating color.